What is up guys, Rick Kakis here, and this is the Nightfall Gold Tier Guide, showcasing not only how to beat this week's Nightfall from January 31st to February 7th, but also some tips for how to achieve that Gold Tier ranking so that you can complete the Sunrise Bounty from Zavala, and hopefully RN Jesus will be blessed enough to give you the exotic Icebreaker Sniper Rifle. Now, let's get started by discussing this week's Nightfall modifiers. Now, on a scale of 1 to incredibly annoying, these modifiers are actually pretty close to incredibly annoying. We have a lot of negative modifiers. Firstly, we have Berserk. This is going to make it so that minions of the darkness do not flinch, no matter what you do to them. You shoot them in the face with a rocket launcher, you punch them right in the neck, you sleep with their wife, they are not going to flinch, they are going to keep shooting at you. This can be a huge deal, especially in boss battles. I think people kind of underestimate how much they actually rely on flinch to stay alive in normal gameplay scenarios. So if you're a more aggressive player, if you're putting on a shotgun for this, you really need to tone it down and be careful because Berserk will get you killed. It's no joke. The next modifier we have is probably the biggest factor in choosing your loadout, and it's small arms. Small arms basically doubles the damage output of your primary weapon. So you're going to want to use a very powerful primary weapon. I'm using the Outbreak Prime. It's pretty much the number one when it comes to powerful primaries. It does a crap ton of damage. The whole swarm thing is just phenomenal for damage output. It actually doesn't get affected. The swarms don't get affected by small arms, funny enough. But it's still such a good gun and does bonus damage against Fallen and this strike being featured has a decent amount of Fallen in it. Now I'm willing to guess that if you guys are watching a Nightfall Guide you may be more of the beginning style of players. I always get people in the comments saying like why would you need a Nightfall Guide and then there's literally a comment below that saying you know this is my first Nightfall ever this guide really helped. So obviously these guides are for the people who, I don't know, need them? In any event, guys, if you are struggling, you don't have the Outbreak Prime, obviously, just use a very powerful, potent primary weapon. Pretty much your exotic slot should go to your primary. Something like the Bad Juju, uh, the Zalo Supercell, those are going to be fantastic in terms of damage output, and pretty much any raid primary is also going to be putting forth a lot of damage and doing bonus damage to Fallen, so don't forget about that. Now the next modifier we have is Chav, so you're going to have some guy with a wife beater and a huge gold necklace come up and cuss you out, no I'm just kidding, it's Chav, and it means that your radar is disabled. Now this is just, you know, watch behind you, check behind you every once in a while, you don't want a bunch of enemies to sneak up right behind you, which they can, you have no radar, you have no way of knowing the enemies are spawning potentially, you know, again, just behind you, so make sure you have so spatial awareness in mind when you're playing this Nightfall. The last modifier we have is match game. This means that whatever enemy you're doing damage to with, you're going to be doing a lot less damage to that enemy uh, that has shields if you're using the wrong element. So normally if you're damaging a solar shield with an arc weapon, it's going to do a certain amount of damage, but now because of match game, it's going to do a lot less damage than it normally would. So. With our loadout, we represent this by using the triad of elements in your loadout. And this is what I would recommend to you guys as well. Make sure you're using a certain subclass with a certain element that's, you know, pretty much going to happen regardless. But use pretty much whatever subclass you want. I was using the Sunsinger Warlock. This... Nightfall kind of lends itself to defensive gameplay, uh, so the Sunslinger Warlock is fantastic, the Defender Titan is fantastic, the Night Stalker Hunter is also very good, but pretty much use whatever you're most comfortable with, but whatever element your subclass is, make sure you have the other two elements present in your weaponry. So I'm using a Solar subclass, I've got a Void Sniper, the Devil's Dawn, very powerful sniper rifle, good to go there, and then I've got the Iron Banner Rock Launcher Dealing Arc. All three elements are covered within my build. That's going to be what you guys want as well. So if you encounter a powerful enemy with a shield, you know, in the strike you'll encounter the Taken Centurions with arc shields. Uh, you'll see me whip out my rock launcher to take down those shields and then switch back to my primary and just melt them. And that's pretty much going to be what gameplay style you're going to want to copy as well during this nightfall. Alright, now that's it for the loadout, let's move on to the Nightfall walkthrough. The very first section, I will say at the very beginning, just a little quick tip here, 
kill the enemies off the beginning like they're no trouble to kill and they'll give you an extra buffer zone of points just to help you guarantee that gold tier ranking you don't want to get to the very end get silver tier or what have you and then just have to do the whole thing again to get that sunrise bounty it's just very easy to kill the enemies in the open patrol area off the start moving on from there you're just going to make your way further through this complex of caves until you get to the first very big encounter i'm not going to talk too much about the cave making your way through part it's pretty simple but just watch out for snipers there's quite a few snipers so this entire strike you're going to want to make sure you don't kind of step out in the open with lower health after just getting engaged make sure you heal and then move out into the open because you will get taken down if you're not careful now the first really big major encounter takes place in this open area uh, you're going to have to kill a bunch of enemies fighting each other down below and then once you do kill these enemies you're going to go to the door get dinkle bot wait Wait, that was two years ago. You get your ghost to then open the door and it's just going to spawn several waves of taken enemies. Now, these enemies, it should be noted, are pretty much going to spawn in the bottom here, as you'll see, but there is one wave that spawn kind of up and behind you, and actually it's all snipers. Like, snipers will spawn, and you'll see in the background gameplay right up where I'm holding out on this upper level. Make sure you're not taken unaware by those snipers. In fact, we literally had our team get taken unaware, and one of our teammates died because of this. So just be careful, be aware of this, but I would recommend staying up where you see my team staying up and just shooting down, raining fire down on the enemies below. There's no reason to get closer than we are to fight the enemies on the same level. They kind of all funnel up to you anyways and you're just putting yourself at risk if you're doing that. So stay back, stay in this upper level and just shoot them down from that elevated position. Aside from, again, those snipers, you pretty much don't have anything to worry about. Now once you kill enough Taken, you're going to move on to the next section. The door is going to open and you're going to be presented with these upgraded Fallen Pikes. Now the upgraded versions just shoot bigger bullets, I guess. They do a decent amount of damage and if you want to grab one and shoot some guys with it, you'll see me do that, you totally can. They don't really do that much damage, so you may just want to forego one entirely and just go with your sparrow or on foot, but regardless of what you do, kill the enemies. Don't ignore these enemies. Again, you're going for points. Uh, normally before, you know, in the months before strike scoring was introduced, everyone would just run through this on their sparrow as fast as they could. But again, you're going for points. You obviously want to get that sunrise bounty. Don't ignore these enemies. Uh, the minotaurs are worth 450 points each. So leaving a bunch behind is leaving literally thousands of points behind. Now, once you've slaughtered those enemies, you're going to continue on. There's going to be no enemies for a while, and then you're going to have the last kind of open section before the boss fight arena. In this open section, there are a couple of very powerful enemies, uh, an invisible Yo Health Minotaur. You'll see it actually kills me. Well, I mean, stuff kills me in this strike, but I've got Radiant, so I just come back alive. Like, I'll be playing kind of aggressively, kind of you know, maybe stupidly, because I know I can just revive myself. But you are going to want to be aware of this. Don't just go up there, look at your teammates, be like, hurry up, guys, and then get clubbed in the back of the head by a Minotaur. Make sure you kill all the enemies in this part before the final encounter. Now, the final encounter is going to be legitimately tricky, I'm sure, for a lot of you. The Berserk modifier is not great, especially for this strike. This Nightfall with this boss particularly is just a boss that usually you can rely on stunning him for him to stop shooting at you. The fact that you can't can cause problems. So, here's how we would go about it. Firstly, where do you hold out? Well, in the back section, kind of near where you drop down, it, in that half of the arena, I would recommend holding out. Now, you'll see me holding out kind of to the right. Like, once you drop in and you go to the right, that's where I like to hold out. There is a rock that you can perfectly shoot over, like it gives you cover, the perfect amount of cover. Enemies can't really shoot you from that direction, but you can shoot over top of it and duck behind it whenever you need. However, as you'll see in the background gameplay, there is a Taken Blight that spawns up here specifically where I like to hold out, and it does drop off some enemies. 
Now these enemies are, you'll see some Scions, maybe some basic Vex enemies. They're really nothing too worrisome to deal with. So as long as you're on top of that, as long as you kind of check back there every once in a while, you know, have headphones or have your volume turned up enough that you can hear it spawning, then you can just turn around and kill those enemies. You should be fine. Now there's another spot you can kind of hold out and you'll see it's where my teammates hold out. It's amongst the geysers and rocks, again, on the same back section. These rocks are great. You can slip behind different ones depending on which angle you want to engage the enemies at. And it's just very important to have cover, especially cover that you can kind of move around. The boss does that super annoying taken captain ball of shade, I guess, thrown at you. So he's he is literally throwing shade at you. Like there's no other way to explain it, but those shade balls, they do a ton of damage. They blank your screen like you can't see when you get hit by them. You just want to avoid them. And so you're gonna need to be able to, if you see one coming at you, move to the side. So being in this area with a lot of different pillars, with a lot of different cover is a great idea. I don't really have any other place I can think of, any other place I would recommend holding out in this arena. And you'll often see as well during this fight that the Defender Titans bubble is doing hella work like it is just being phenomenal so a defender titan in this section being able to kind of bubble up regain your health is very very useful now because of small arms you're going to be able to melt a lot of enemies really quickly and even your primaries are going to be doing great damage against the boss as you can see mine is in the background gameplay however don't forget you also have these other weapons in fact you often get kind of blindside you just get focused on using your primary because it's doing so much more damage than normal and then you run out of ammo. Now if you run out of primary ammo it can definitely be a problem so kind of be aware of this and also a sniper in this last section is pretty useful. I had the Outbreak Prime, obviously, so that DPS is fantastic. But if you don't have something as good as the Outbreak, a sniper against the boss is going to be pretty good. Being able to empty a sniper uh, magazine into him and then switch to a primary and just, you know, make up your DPS there is great. And furthermore, there is going to be snipers that spawn in the very back, the Taken Hobgoblins that you definitely want to be aware of as well. The Taken Centurions are another huge problem. They're going to spawn near the end once the boss's health gets low enough. So just be aware of that. They're going to do a ton of damage and it's just not worth it. Even if you see that gold, that you know, ranking achieved pop up, it's just not worth it to ignore the ads and just try to focus on the boss because you're going to get killed. All of the ads in this encounter, the Taken ads, you do a lot of damage you know the signs replicate for goodness sake so you just can't leave them alone or there'll be an unstoppable army so really take your time to kill the ads before you do too much damage to the boss the ads are health gated on the boss which means that once you take care of the ads they are not going to spawn at all until you do more damage to the boss still his health goes down a certain amount and then that's going to spawn the next wave so if you start to get overrun by ads, make sure to communicate with your team to just leave the boss alone, to stop killing him, stop doing damage, then just shift your focus to the ads, kill them. Once they're dead and you have some breathing room again, then go back to taking care of the boss. And so guys, that is it for this week's Nightfall Gold Tier Guide. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Now if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny content similar to this and don't want to miss out on next week's Nightfall Guide, be sure to slap that subscribe button and if you actually want to be notified of new uploads, be sure to press the bell beside subscribe. If you if you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel, which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.